Hey, it's who we in Minecrafter. And, uh, I was just fooling out with some of the 14W19A. Yeah, it says at the top of my Minecraft screen. Uh, 14W19A snapshot features. And, uh, I created this awesome TNT cannon. You can also launch falling sand and... Like, I was, do I was doing that earlier. That's why there's, uh, some sand here. But, like, here. So, basically, the way this works, I know Seth Bling already has a video out a uh, part of this concept, which is the slime block launching concept for entities. So, that's the one of the main concepts of this. Uh, contraption, I guess. Uh, so, when the sand or the TNT falls, it aggregates this trip wire, which I just need to have it actually activate <coughs> without me having to like, place TNT and then quickly press a button. So, replace a sand and press a button. I have to press a button for the TNT. Um, but, so then I had to like arrange this so that the trip wire wouldn't break every time because it would in earlier versions. But then I got it to not break every time, as you can see. And um, the reason why you have to use the dispenser, which uh, has some TNT in it, uh, is because if you place TNT and then manually activate it with the redstone torch, like I was doing earlier, it will kind of like I'll show over here away from the contraption like it lands off the block a bit so I actually tried that earlier and it blew up most of this because it wouldn't fall down and get launched away so you have to use this and then what I have over here is I actually don't need that block uh, so when the signal gets activated it pushes this one tick later this will uh, turn off which will turn this on because this will be uninverted which will then turn the this redstone on which will activate this and two ticks is just the right time for it to launch well and uh yeah I, it's been moving minecrafter and actually i have been doing quite a bit of uh redstoning and actually, I might as well. That I called that world pong because I did download a bunch of stuff from uh, uh, the uh, 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 Seth Blink. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I just completely forgot his name for a second. Though uh, this one I built on my own. It's an elevator using the. Uh, slime block stickiness. Now, I did try to top it with bricks, but didn't work. Because <laughs> um, when it pushes you up, you glitch through the blocks, because you need the slime blocks to bounce you up. It's one of the other features. So, oh, this is on the wrong setting. Second. Okay, so, uh, I'd walk up, and the elevator door will be closed, because it's an elevator. Uh, so I press the button, the door will open, I walk over here, launch it up. Yeah, I'm on the second floor, walk around. Walk over here, press the button, door is open, and then it will close. I had to make it have a big wait time, because I need to make sure I got through. Now this only works for single player, because say, I mean, I could always add a feature, another button, like, to call the elevator down, but then, uh, it would get into a bunch of weird stuff, so when I go up, it launches me up, and then, say, another person wants to come up, it's like, oh, hey, buddy's up there, and to go meet with him, he would press this, and it would be all weird, because this would go down, and the door would close and you'd have no way of getting up.
Okay, so now on to the redstone of this mechanism, which there is a lot more of, but a lot of the stuff over here is just getting the timing right for uh, the door, because the door, when it closes, needs to, well, it needs to close, but it has to wait for the, um, for this to come down and then have some time for you to walk out of the elevator. But it also will have to, uh, um, I mean, open, because it's the same. It's just the one tick pulse to open or close. It will also, so it would also have to uh, open before it, the elevator goes up. But I'll talk about that mechanism later. The main part of this, which is the actual elevator, is this. So, this is a T flip flop. So when I press the button, it acts as if I had pulled the lever, but since there's two activation points, if you want to have something like that, you have to use a T-flip-flop. And a T-flip-flop is basically a one-tick pul one pulse, which, oh, I don't have any sa uh, sandstone, uh, whatever. Uh, so the pulse comes in, pushes this up, so it only comes out for as long as this repeater is set to, which is one tick. You can also set this two ticks, three ticks, four ticks but I set it to one tick because I want a one tick pulse. So then, after that repeater, it comes and activates this, which, when a, I, I know I'm explaining all the basic concepts, but you never know how much people know. And so this will uh, push this forward, but since it's a one tick pulse, it won't actually pull it back. So it'll put it onto here, and then get the signal from that and transmute it. Trans transport it. <laughs> I almost said I did say transmute. Um, so go so the signal will go through, through here to there, onto this redstone. Through a bunch of ticks, computer things because I really wanted that door stuff to work. Um, and then over here. So the the first one, actually, uh, I'll get to what we want to activate. For. The thing is. When this signal first comes through, this is the only one that this is the only uh, piston that can get activated. These others are too high, which is on purpose. So uh, when this gets activated, I know Deathwing had a video similar with some similar concepts, but anyway, when this gets activated, it pulls everything else up, including the other pistons, because it's all sticky pistons. I mean, sticky up. Uh, Sticky pistons and slime blocks. So then, so this activated first, this activated second, this third, that fourth. So when this comes up, it gets activated by that and pushes the rest up. Then that can get activated, etc., etc. And then this just sticks out a bit more so that uh, I can get the actual height I need it to get. Of course, I could have this all raised a bunch and have just this. But also that would look really weird. Um, anyway, but uh, so the reason why this has to has to has to activate first and that last and the second and that third is because when it's getting deactivated, this has to be like deactivated, and then this deactivated, then this, then this. So I will actually just so you can get the idea of what's happening at the end. I'll activate it all. So now you can see, I need this to deactivate first, so it'll pull everything down, so that it will actually be touching this when this deactivates, so that will pull everything down, etc, etc, and then this finally pulls it all back down, and these are all set two ticks apart, which is, because uh, I, just to be safe from glitchiness with the pistons pulling it back and forth, because I didn't want this to deactivate just before this ended up pulling it back. Because I do believe pistons take um, just about a tick to m move back and forth, so I didn't want any glitches happening like that. So on to the specifics of how this works, the uh, doors. So there's no door on the top floor because I didn't put one in. But uh, over here, so this is attached to the same signal from the 
just before the two flip flop because I needed a one tick pulse. Uh, though I did put another one tick pulse in later, but uh, anyway, I will show that when it comes. So what happens is I need a oh first. So this is up, but I'll show you when it's closed. So first, I need a... Yeah, it takes a bit of time for that to happen because it's to... That basically is waiting for it. But, uh, anyway, you will all see what I'm talking about once I'm done explaining. So this signal, this one tick pulse, comes through, and since right now the iron block is here, here, oh, I'm hitting the building. Is here the signal can go through on this redstone, blah blah, through here. This is pointing this way so it doesn't go through there. Over here, coming up, and it activates the door with one tick. Oh, because and I needed to repair just so the signal would make the whole distance. But as you can see, before it goes there, it splits off here, goes under this little bridge, sort of. Has one of these just to, uh, I don't know, extend the signal. Oh, this was uh, for the purposes of making sure the signal goes this way. Well, there's another one of these. I don't know why I have that. But I think well, it works, so I'm keeping that. Oh, right, yes, I needed, actually, I don't even remember what I needed. I just remember that it works with that there. So the, if I were to, if you, one of you are to build this, I would keep that. And all the, these, you might not need absolutely all of them, but I think it works because you do need a lot of time to stop bouncing as much and get through the door. But as I was saying back here, so this goes and activates, but when so that since this is hooked up to a uh, one tick pulse, as you didn't quite couldn't quite see there, um, it will when it gets a one tick pulse, it will pull this back from there to here. So uh, I'll show that happening. See, you just kind of caught a glimpse of that. And uh, yeah, so that's that part. So now that's here. Instead of taking a really short time to get there, it takes a very, very long time. But since these are all four tick repeaters, it is no longer a one tick pulse and is now a four tick pulse. Um, and so, yeah, when it gets through here, I have to activate another one tick pulse. And uh, it just barely fits. I had to kind of like build the building a bit around this. As uh, so you can. See, actually, when you go in, oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, it, uh, right under here, I believe. Uh, yeah, right under there. So, right under there is the one tick pulse. Which just barely fits. Uh, but, anyway. So after it goes through there, it has this repeater here, because to make it one tick. And then, ah uh, yes, I remember why I had that repeater there. Because this would activate this, no it does activate that, I, look, I don't know. That repeater is there for some reason, it is mystifying me. But anyway, when this comes through, it does activate through here, putting it back to the other setting, because it will have been back to where it needs to be for the other setting. It goes up here, over here, and finally opens the door. Or closes the door. Yeah, it would be closing the door. Oop, didn't mean to talk. So then, now we can see this all in action one more time. Going down. You bounce a bit, which is one of the main reasons I need a big weight there. Now I press this, opens. We and now you might be wondering why it doesn't work if I ah I keep on hitting E instead of W. If um this is here. Well it does work going down. And it actually works very nicely because you don't bounce. 
but for going up, it, uh, yeah, you get a bit glitchy. They're not that glitchy, actually. Usually it, it's a bit weirder. But if I'm standing kind of close to the edge of the block, I will fall off. So, yeah. Which is why I have a slime block here. And, um, those of you that aren't another aren't informed about the snapshots very well, another feature of the snapshots is that since the slime blocks pull everything with them, the only thing that they don't pull is obsidian. And actually, one of the big things about having this door open uh, before, like, have that door open, stay open, uh, was even though it destroys the ability for multiplayer, is that, uh, actually it doesn't quite, you could just kind of call it down. I, I'm just saying is that it would be weird for multiplayer. Anyway, but this has to stay open because, well, so that uh, this doesn't grab onto that and then get stuck because it can't pull it any further. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been Hoovian Minecrafter, and this has been a very long video.